So I am going to introduce the rest of my panelists. So Eric Alexander, Martin Fusek, uh, and Ed Krupa. And Christina is going to be the moderator of the chats as well and help us out with the Q and A's uh, that come through. So I call this art of scientific storytelling because this stuck with me when I was doing my PhD and my advisor, he actually used this term. So you're telling a scientific story. So there's not just method or technique, but there's also an art to it. Uh, it's, not, it's not histrionics or dramatics, but it's actually art all the same. And I'm going to introduce you to the concept of the problem gap and hook heuristic that was developed by the great professor Lorelei Lingard and colleagues at Western Ontario University in London, Ontario. Not the London, England. So the, here are very modest session goals because it needs to be a conversation and a little bit of skills practice as well. So we'll reflect on how scientific storytelling elevates educational scholarship. We have all read very, very rigorous scientific papers, but we could barely get through to the end because each time we do, we fall asleep. And so the art added to the craft can really make a great paper. And introduce the problem gap hook heuristic and we'll do a little bit of practice and have some conversation on it. And also another thing, think about an, a field, especially in education, as a scholarly conversation and decide if you want to join the conversation. Do you have a passion for the field? And do you want to advance that field? So let's talk about the study. We often use the word study when we talk about a paper, a particularly a research paper. And this is uh, something to think about. The study lives in the methods and results. But there's more than the methods and results. The story lives in the introduction and discussion. And without the story, we don't know what the lessons learned were, what is applicable to our own situation, what we'd like to change in our own practice. So let's start with the introduction, which is, I'm going to focus mostly on the introduction and the discussion, but the panelists will focus on the paper as a whole. So problem versus topic. So what's the difference? So let me give you an example. Communication skills are very important in clinical practice, therefore I'm going to perform a study. Is that a problem? And can you convince your readers, well, before the readers, the editor and the reviewer, that yours is a story worth telling? Probably not. But if you say communication skills are an integral part of a clinician's practice, and particularly serious illness conversations are very important in the training of residents. However, many residents have expressed that they are not comfortable having these conversations with the patients. There is a problem. So it's an integral topic because there is a deficiency. So there is a problem. That's a problem statement. So not only what is the problem to explore, the next thing to remember is, is it important? My pain in the uh, little toe of the foot is an important problem to me, therefore I'm going to research what are the causes of pain in the little toe of the foot. Probably you care, but nobody else would care. So the topic needs to be important as well. And no disrespect to podiatrists in the audience, but um, so, as soon as we define the problem, the next step we do is we go to the literature review. And think of the literature review globally in this uh, philosophical sense, if you like. So what have other authors studied? What is the current knowledge about the topic? Are there gaps or deficiencies in the current understanding? It's not just nobody's ever done this before, but perhaps people have reported this, but there isn't sufficient explanation and this topic can be explored even in greater depth. And that is how we position ourselves in the conversation. 
Then we come to the gap that we've just discovered. So we identify a knowledge gap, not just a total hole. We can also identify inadequate or inaccurate interpretation in the evidence. Or some people have said this, but others have said this. Can we resolve this debate and identify something that is not being explained? So that's the gap. We talked about the problem. We talked about the gap. The gap is now leading to the hook. How can we convince others that our study will narrow the gap, not close the gap? Let's not get over enthusiastic, narrow the gap and advance the field. And that's the hook. Despite all this information, so and so has not yet been explained in its entirety. And the purpose of this study was to somehow narrow this gap that is important problem to be studied. So that is an introduction of the problem gap and hook. With that, I'm going to invite the panelists, Eric, Ed, and Martin, to give us, give us some insights about how you approach scientific storytelling. I'll stop sharing for just a second, and then we can go back for the rest. Eric, would you like to start? Sure. You know, I think that the lead in was perfect. And what it gets to is, I mean, the way I kind of start my thinking here is that every section in a manuscript has purpose. Um, and really understanding the specific purpose of what you're doing in that introduction, for example, or the methods or the results or discussion, I think um, is critical. And I like the problem gap uh, hook um, kind of heuristic. Uh, to me, uh, in a simplistic mind, when I think about the introduction, it's um, I'm going to add one thing and then reinforce another. And what I'll add is I do think there's a need in the introduction to allow the, the reader and the reviewer, certainly as you're submitting, to also acknowledge that you know the space, that if you go into it completely cold and there's kind of an obvious you know, gap that is there, um, not the gap in the research you're trying to study, but the gap in someone saying, I don't think they quite know the nuance of what they're getting at, that can harm you. So um, I also just want to add in kind of that brief kind of awareness that you get it, you understand where it's at. I think that's important. And the way I simplistically just want to reinforce the problem gap hook is, as I was taught 20 some years ago, I like the idea that someone said, geez, by the, by the time your reader is done with the introduction, they should um, really reflect and say, oh my goodness, this is really an important thing. And also, I can't believe that no one else has done this until now. And if you can kind of tell the story in that way, you've set it up really well. Thanks, Derek. Martin, would you like to go? Sure. Just to, just to reinforce what Eric just said, the, um, I think that the gap part of it, and I highlighted it in the, in the chat box, is that you need to do your literature search well. And the mistake I've made is, um, is in thinking I had a great idea, going out and doing all the work associated with collecting the data and analyzing it and bringing it forward. And then in writing up the discussion, realizing that four other people had done this before and had done it better than I did. And so that, um, so that that's, a, that's a hole that, uh, that you don't want to fall in. And so that, um, so really getting a sense of the gap and being frank with yourself as to whether there really is a gap there and whether you really should be doing the, um, the thing that's going to be a tremendous amount of work is an important discipline that you can layer on to, to your work and, and really get outside information as well because you can you know, find yourself really, really passionate about your idea. And sometimes the, the best advice you can get is somebody throwing cold water on it saying, and published it in blank, and um, and that's all taken care of. So, uh, so I think that that's um, that's one part that I would highlight in terms of the gap. And then the the other thing is the problem gap hook isn't the only heuristic, and so that there's um, you know I think it's really really useful because it uh, it does focus on the the three things that are important in the in the introduction, and it um, does lend itself to telling a story as a po and organizes things in a way that's pleasing for the reader. But the, another one that I like is they say I say. And so that um, so in which you lay out the conventional thinking about 
such and such topic and then flip it around and say, I'm going to introduce a new perspective on it. And so that's, um, so it's a, it's a bit, it's less about identifying a hole and then filling the hole. It's about saying we're, we're thinking in this way, maybe we should be thinking over, over in this other way. And so, um, so again, that, that sort of debate, high school debate kind of, um, kind of set up is another way of, of doing this, but, um, but just to reinforce that I really, really do like the problem gap hook method and, um, and, uh, and in terms of, um, storytelling, it's a very, very valuable technique. No, you're, uh, absolutely right, Martin. It's not that the problem gap hook doesn't have things in between. If you think about it as three slices of bread, a club sandwich, if you like, you still need to sandwich it somehow. The problem has to be worth telling or worth studying. So that the importance of the problem comes in and at the problem stage. But just as you say, that they say and I say is what leads to the gap. And the gap doesn't mean, as you said, a gaping hole, but really, is there a debate? Is there uncertainty? Is there another perspective? Is there another way of looking at this? I'm going to look at something totally different and I'm going to come up with a different explanation. So the gap actually has a lot, a nod to the literature, as you say, and then, but how can I join and elevate this scholarly conversation? So there are many ways of looking at the gap. It's very simplistic to say gap. And then, but the hook is, as Eric was saying, it's, are you qualified to narrow this gap or resolve this debate? How are you going to do that? And can you tell a convincing story? And are people going to read and actually apply what you say in practice? So that would be the hook. So there's a lot going into problem, gap, and hook. Ed, over to you. Yeah, hi, everybody. I, uh, I certainly agree with what everybody said so far, and I think we're all saying, lar gave, giving you largely the same message, just in slightly, from slightly different angles. I would offer one bit of advice, however, uh, and this is advice as serving 50 years, not just as a, a researcher, but as a reviewer. Read several articles that you like. I can't tell you how many times I've read something and said, Oh, these are beginners. Uh, it's just clear that these are, are not people who've done this a lot or who write like good journal article writers. So read, take a look, appreciate. And as everybody said, orient in the introduction, orient people to a problem, an issue that's important. Uh, make it clear as people as people were saying about checking the literature let them know where what others have done not only yourself so you don't end up reinventing the wheel hopefully you've done that but you know never know but let others know because i was always taught that science is a cumulative endeavor let show how your study builds upon what others know what theory and evidence exists and then uh, get people excited. And I think the term that's always been used for me is value added. Why should I read this article? What will I learn? What, how will I walk away from it with new information that I didn't have before? Um, I think that's what excites something. And also, when you're doing that, because we focus largely on the introduction, but what you're doing in the introduction is setting up everything else in the paper, in particular the discussion. In fact, when I was writing my dissertation, I was advised to write my introduction, strangely enough, as my last chapter, simply because I didn't know what I was introducing until I knew what I had found and therefore what the message was and how to frame it. But I don't necessarily advise that, but make all the parts of the paper connect. Let them tell a coherent story from beginning to end. I'll just follow up on Ed real briefly, um, which, and also just share a little bit of dirty laundry, which is, you know, certainly when I reflect on my career to this point, um, I, was, I was really not a good writer, nor was I interested in becoming a good writer when I was interested in becoming a doctor. I was much more about the interest I had in science. Um, and where I'm going with this is I've become a better writer. I'm probably still not a good one. Um, 
And when people used to say to me, that's really nicely written, I couldn't kind of understand that. Um, but but now I, I'm taking to it more. It's a little bit what Ed was saying. When you find something you think is well written or you just enjoy reading, what is it about that? Um, and, and for me, it took a lot of also going back to those high school English classes, college classes, et cetera, where those principles of don't repeat yourself, make sure you have a good thesis, make sure you're clear with your words, use as few words as you can, those principles of writing still really much, you know, they very much come forward and, and I think are true. And I just wanted to share that. I completely agree with all of you. And um, I'll just clarify a couple of things before we get into uh, the uh, small groups. Essentially, people are asking about specific methodology and can you use this? Yes, the problem gap hook is a general construct for it doesn't really connect necessarily to this methodology or that methodology is just an overview. Is it, what is the problem that you wish to study? Is it important? What have others said, as Martin said? What do you think you would like to say? And then why do you think you're the best person to say, to, uh, to narrow the gap? Uh, and uh, as Ed said, value added, and I would also say advance or elevate the field. So that's one. And uh, another question, uh, just to clarify any confusion, is problem gap hook is not the title or the subheadings uh, of the introduction. The subheadings are still of the paper, are still the background, the methods and the uh, results discussion. But within the introduction, you have a sense of the problem, the gap, and the hook. So they are not subheadings by any means, and they work for all kinds of research methodology. With that, what we're going to do is I sent an article. Um, you should all have it on email. If not, we can. Uh, so this is the paper, The Transition from Medical Student to Resident, a Qualitative Study of New Resident Perspectives. So the, what we are going to do is very simple. Do not be afraid. You're not supposed to have read the whole paper, nor are you supposed to read the paper right now. We're just going to look at the introduction, which is really half a page. So one group, group one, will just focus on identifying the problem statement. Identify it, highlight it in your small group, and try to rewrite it to make it even more compelling. That's it, one sentence, one short sentence. Group two is going to look for the gap. They said, I want to, I think this is still unresolved. That's the gap. So using Martin's words. So where is the gap? And highlight that and write a sentence of how you might make it even more compelling. Like your gap statement. So it's an, a little exercise in writing. And the last group, group three, is going to identify the hook where the authors are saying they are the ones to narrow this, this gap or answer the, an unresolved issue and try to write a hook statement. So most people are back, it looks like. Right. So Rachel from our group uh, is going to uh, restate the problem with a little more emphasis and, a, and more succinctly. Correct, Rachel? Yep, I'm happy to do that. And so just the first part of our discussion, we spent a long time trying to decide and agree on what the problem statement was in the current paper. And we decided that um, with Shuba's help that it was the um, third and fourth sentences where it talks about um, graduating medical students, not um, questions about whether they're prepared for new responsibilities and also that residency directors are worried that the new doctors can't consistently perform activities that will be required of them. So what we decided was we would keep the first two sentences, which are a nice um, intro. So what we said is we talked about the, using the words yet or however as a nice way to like clue people in that you're going to say something important and maybe clue them into the problem. So our problem statement was yet comma graduating medical students and residency directors both report concerns about um, the degree of preparation of trainees for residency 
which has, or you could, you know, whatever you want to say, their next stage of training, which has potential adverse consequences for both intern well-being as well as patient care. So we kind of combine the sentences, but tried to make them a little more concise and also make the link to why it was important a little more clear. Could go next because we also focused on the problem, at least we. So uh, I'll speak and then Ed can jump in as well. So um, I think that a few of us, myself included, had first found ourselves drawn to the end of the second paragraph as the problem and, and probably mistakenly so where, where it said um, a little bit efforts, you know, to enhance handoffs between educators. Little is known about how residents perceive transitions and therefore it's hard to know what to do about it. But Vera appropriately said, maybe that's more the gap that needs to be addressed. So then we started backtracking a little bit into our own kind of sentence. And we kind of backed into this idea that at, at its core, a transition between student and resident is a destabilizing process. And so then the need for help was at the root, at the root level of the learner, not the structure, not the teacher as much, but the learner. And then Ed was getting at, in this case, it seemed like maybe pulling together the problem and gap a little bit could be beneficial. Ed, I'll let you comment. Yeah, I, I'm an impatient reader. And if I start an article and it starts kind of telling me a, a very big story before it lets me know what the problem and gap are, I can become pretty quickly dissatisfied and move on. So um, I, I was thinking, that probably within a sentence at the most, it would be good to state the problem, which is the issue of the difficulties of the transition, and then pretty quickly get into the gap, which is but, and what, which is identifies what the study is going to be about, and that is that we don't know what residents think. Now, at that point, it doesn't mean you've used up problem and gap and you can't go back to problem. You can elaborate on the problem one more time in broader sense, I think the way that the opening there does, once you've kind of identified the gap. Uh, so I, we were kind of thinking in our group, start problem, keep it short, and then move into gap very quickly, and then elaborate more on the problem and the gap. That is an excellent point, Ed. Uh, so you're, uh, you're absolutely right. This goes on a bit. And remember, this is a well-written paper. This is a published paper in a very prestigious journal. And yet we're struggling to see when are they talk, going to talk about the problem? When is the gap coming up? So we can all write better regardless. So uh, if you combine what Eric said, that might be the first sentence of the background. Transition from medical school to internship is a destabilizing mentally or, or professionally destabilizing time. Yet, and uh, new doctors are expected to take on blah, 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 all these responsibility. Yet, both program directors and uh, young interns feel a uh, report that they're underprepared to take on all these. Th that becomes the problem statement in two or three sentences tops and then uh, lead into the gap. But does anyone focus on, uh, so that's the problem, gap or hook, Martin? We were focused on the gap. If you don't mind, I'll share screens. If, um, and so what we did was we highlighted, um, you know, kind of where we thought the gap was, was illustrated. And, um, and specifically what we, what we thought was, um, was in, you know, kind of, kind of nicely done was that up in here, you know, you, you uh, the first two groups have nicely described, you know, kind of the highlighting of the problem and, uh, and they, and they tug on our emotions to suggest the significance, you know, sort of the highest risk of depression and suicide is in the first months of the residency program. And so that, uh, so that they you know, have a, have a sense of that. And then they lay out that, that people are um, trying to address this. And so the, the prevalence of capstone courses has, um, has come forward. And what I happen to know is I was at NYU up until a, a year or more ago and Lucy Chang and Abigail Winkle are the coordinators for their capstone course and their transition to residency course. And, um, and so, that, um, so that they're looking at it from the perspective of how can these capstone courses help 
And so, so they establish, it's always nice when you can find a meta-analysis in your area. And so that they establish that a meta-analysis looked at some of this stuff in terms of these capstone courses and has shown that at least for clinical knowledge, skills, and confidence that, um, that this seems to, seems to work. But then they, then they start to define the edges of the gap and they use signal words like however, you know, kind of that's all well and good, but however, bam, 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 bam. And then up in here, they say that, um, you know, kind of people have tried this and people have tried that and promising intervention is this and the core EPA project from the AAMC is also promising. And so that, um, so again, start to tap at the fact that people are looking at this transition and, um, and doing it in all of these ways, but then again, signal that it's not complete, but the optimal feasibility and use of these programs has not yet been defined and they have references for that. And if I were a reviewer, I'd go look at these references and are they some sort of lame, vague types of things or have people thoughtfully laid out where you're at? And so it's not, you know, when in, in Ellen in our group pointed out that, you know, you, you never know whether you should make your introduction really, really detailed and long and nail down everything, or should you keep it high level and short and just to, so that, um, so that you get to the, um, you get to the meat of the matter quickly. That's always a judgment call, but you can, you can borrow, you can lean on your references to define you know, exactly where the gap is and just allude to them as, as you move forward. And then the key part in terms of laying out the gap was this paragraph here. And so, that, um, so as these efforts, and so a summary of everything that's come forth, it remains unclear. And so that um, so this is the this is the important thing, and so it it is debatable how unclear it is. Their claim is that it's unclear, and so that it depends on how to what extent you feel in this high level introduction that it is unclear. But they've at least stated where their claim is and what the gap is and what they're now going to address. So that um, so I think that that's um, that's the way we looked at the at the definition of the gap, the idea that they'd said what what others have said and what others have been doing in this space, but they signaled using words like however and but and it remains unclear to suggest where the holes are and where they're they're going to drive through. Martin, if you can uh, share again uh, right after your pink highlighted sentence, the last one, the gap. Mm -hmm. is the mm -hmm. next sentence, which is sure. the hook. Since no one uh, worked on the hook, there's the hook right there. It remains unclear how the information gathered can best be used, which is uh, your highlighted version. Now the hook comes up, understanding how new residents experience both expected and unexpected challenges of the transition could inform how educators support them through this important step in their professional development. That's the hook. So here are the gaps. We have to understand it. Therefore, that's the hook. The hook automatically leads into the study, the purpose of the study or this study aim to. So the hook is not the study purpose or the study aim, but the hook comes before the purpose of the study or the study objectives. So that's the problem gap and hook. So it doesn't need to be labeled in subtitled, but it should be there within the introduction. And as well written as this, you know, in our group, we also um, discussed that as well written as this introduction, it's short, but the gap goes in multiple pieces. It's a bit fragmented. Perhaps it could have been gathered together, for example, and then lead into the hook. So that's one thing we felt that they got a bit wordy on the, you know, scattered things throughout the introduction. I don't know what other groups discussed. I, I think we, we didn't focus, our group, we didn't focus on the hook, but we talk about um, areas that interest us, for instance, like, it, that it immediately catch our eyes, like, for instance, the director do not know the appropriate assignments. And, and that seems to be a hook because 
um, if they are not appropriately prepared, we don't know what kind of responsibility we can assign them. And then there is another sentence talk about suicide. And, and, and of course, if we understand how to support them, it can also improve their well-being. So um, the hook, there is an implication of hooks, like if we can gather their perspective, have a clear understanding, we can help the directors, we can help the residents. Totally. That, uh, I think you're absolutely on target there. So the hook is not the hook to the topic, but the hook to your study. So uh, think of the problem statement as this is an important problem and that has to be studied, something like that. And then the literature review and the gap, which says other people have done this, but this, the information or knowledge is incomplete or there is a debate, or there is uncertainty. The hook is now grabbing the readers and saying, I am the person to narrow this gap. So it, the hook is more to the study. You can think of it as a gap between the, uh, sorry, uh, the bridge between the gap and the study purpose. I just want to do a very quick and then uh, move on to the, I'll just do one discussion and then we can move on. So we did this. But I just want to give you, here we go. This is all in, um, I just wanted to give you a sample of how I completely changed my intro. So the problem is newer conceptualizations of feedback. This is the first sentence of my intro section. See the yet, feedback emphasizes the skills and that's the problem. So the first sentence began with a problem rather than the, ba the background was first part of the sentence, the problem was the second part. This is the gap. Experts said this, of course, there's more to the intro, but the gap, whether such approaches enhance is less well studied. Moreover, it's not clear. This came pretty quickly. And here's the hook. The recent emphasis and application necessitates further exploration. That's the hook. Therefore, the purpose of this study was to use facilitated debriefing. So, I, uh, you know, after attending uh, this writing skills masterclass workshop, I just changed my writing just to make it more emphatic and then more attractive to the readers. Not to say that every paper is still going to be published, but I think I'm a better writer. I'm not going to talk about this. Methods and results are easy and I simplified it all in one slide. Methods, what did you do? Can you justify your design? Have you explained your methods well enough that someone else can see if your results will be applicable to their context or, or they should do it again and they can replicate your study? Results are who are the main characters in your results and have you depicted them convincingly, not with your big interpretation, but reporting in a neutral way. So the discussion actually brings the whole story to a close. And here are a few things to think about. Has your story added to the scholarly conversation? Have you at least partially filled the gap? What are the limitations of your design? Lessons learned and take home messages. There are three storylines that you can adopt in the discussion. Coming full circle. Remember, this is what my study aimed to do, and I wanted to narrow this gap, and I have done it. That's coming full circle. Deep exploration is, this is what previous people said, but you know it's not being studied in depth, and I'm going to do a deep exploration, and this is what my results um, come down to and how I interpret my results. Now you can do another one, which is surprise insight, which is I set out to do this, but I tr discovered something entirely new. And this comes up frequently in doing something. And then lo and behold, something entirely unexpected comes up. And that's okay too, surprise insight. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to, since the hour is up, I'm going to stop sharing and then focus on Q&A and discussion. And you have Eric and Ed and Martin and myself and everyone else at your disposal to ask some questions and answers.
Yes, we got two great questions in the chat. One was from Zira, and she wants to know whether you can use the problem gap hook heuristic when you're writing a lit review for grounded theory research, when you don't actually know what you are going to find in any way. Martin, I'm going to turn that over to you. That's a great question, actually. I think you can. I think that uh, the part of it is that then you need to define the gap really, really well, because you're going to go in and explore. And so that, um, so that defining where you're going and what you're, you know, why this could be good hunting ground um, is, a, is a really, really important uh, way of doing it. And so that the, you know, the problem gap hook, the idea that these are exact building blocks that are exactly the same size and get done exactly the same way for each and every, each and every format isn't true. And instead, sometimes the gap is the whole thing and the problem is so self-evident that, you, that you, can, you can go off in, in those sorts of directions. And, and sometimes the context dictates it. And so that when you're writing a grant, the problem gap hook thing is really, really helpful, but the hook is the important thing. And so that what's your angle and why is your team and your institution especially compelling to carry out the grant and justify the cost and the, um, and the dollars that you're asking for. And so that there would be problem gap, you know, so both important, but hook being super, um, super um, you know, we'll close the deal. And so no. I hope that addresses it, the question. Martin, you've raised the issue of uh, research grants and writing research grants. And in every research grant, especially in IH, there's a section called significance. And significance is all about the hook. Why should we care? Why should we fund this? How will the knowledge help us solve a problem or, clara or, or elaborate on a theory or whatever? And, uh, okay. you know, so in writing a grant, you really have to know, very, be very clear. In your article, when you're writing an article, for me, it's one thing when you're designing the study, what the, the problem and gap and hook are. When, and, and although maybe you're not supposed to say this, but I think experience suggests that then once you do the analysis and look at what you found, you might find that you've that the most interesting part of your findings are not exactly what you were setting out to do. So when you write the paper, you design the problem and gap and hook to know what to be consistent with what you have to say. So in a way, it should be that these drive the, the, the design, but once you've got your data, uh, that itself may design, may drive in a backward way, exactly how you present the problem cap and hook. I'd like to um, add to that because two of my papers were grounded theory papers and I followed the heuristic. So the grounded theory methodology does not arise from the problem or gap or hook. It actually follows from your study question. And before your study question, you need the problem gap and hook. So those three do not drive the methodology, but your study questions drive the methodology. So is this a problem worth studying? Is this important, applicable to any kind of research study? What is the gap in literature, applicable to all kinds of research methodologies? The hook, why are you the most qualified person to carry out this, to then narrow this gap? That's the hook applicable to any methodology. It's the study question that drives whether this is appropriate for a grounded theory methodology or a phenomenology methodology or a randomized controlled trial or a cohort study and so on and so forth. I want to thank everyone for joining us. Thank uh, Dr. Romani for leading this. Thank our panel. Thank Christina behind the scenes, Caitlin and Karen too. There's a real team that helps to pull this off and we're just thrilled to get us together. All right, I invite everyone back to do this again in a couple weeks or anything in between. Just check our website here at the Brigham Education Institute. Um, again, a huge thanks to everyone. Get, bring us ideas for how we can keep this going uh, as part of an education, medical education community. Uh, and with that, I just want to uh, bring it to a close. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>